Hey guys, John V from PhoneWin here. Right now you're watching our video review of the Samsung Galaxy S5 Active. So why would anyone want to pick up the Samsung Galaxy S5 Active knowing that Samsung's flagship now has a water resistant construction? Well, if you're more prone to dropping your phone, the Galaxy S5 is a more ruggedized version of Samsung's flagship. So it's not only water resistant, but it's dust proof and shock proof as well. Even though it shares the Galaxy S5 name, the Active has a more rugged design similar to what we saw with last year's model. The design isn't stylish or pretty, but it's not meant to be just because with the Active, it's all about protection. And that's exactly what we find here, folks. It's still made of plastic, but the type that they use is a lot sturdier than the Galaxy S5. It meets military specification A10G and it's also IP67 rated, so it means that it's dust proof, drop proof from a height of four feet, and also water resistant to survive submersion in under one meter of water for up to 30 minutes. Now before you jump into the pool or submerge underwater, there are two things you gotta be mindful about. First and foremost, you gotta make sure that the rear cover is secure. And secondly, you can't forget to secure the flap covering the micro USB port. Luckily, there's no compromise with the display here. It's the same one found in the Galaxy S5, so it's a 5.1 inch 1080p Super AMOLED display. Detail, of course, isn't a problem with this one just because you get some really crisp looking text. So even the web browser, everything just has a nice clear look to it. It continues to have several other pleasant qualities. For example, you have that iridescent glow thanks in part to the oversaturated colors it's able to produce. Of course, the colors will vary to different degrees depending on the mode that you select. So you have a total of five different ones, standard, adapt, dynamic, professional, and cinema. Out of all of them, we actually find the most realistic colors produced with cinema mode. Typical of AMOLED panels in general, it has superb viewing angles, so there's minimal distortion, even in extreme angles. Better yet, the display reaches a peak brightness output of 420 nits, making it more than visible outdoors with the sun present. In fact, the display jumps to this higher contrast mode to make it very easy on the eyes. Being a part of the Galaxy S5 line, it shares some of the same ports and buttons as the flagship device. On the right side, you have the power button. On the left, you have the volume controls. Up top, three and a half millimeter headset jack. You have an IR blaster. You have the various microphones. A micro USB 2.0 port here. In the rear, a 16 megapixel autofocus camera with a single LED flash. It has the ability to shoot 4K video. And just like the Galaxy S5, it has a, it has a heart rate sensor in the back to measure your pulse. What's different though is that it features physical Android buttons and they've removed the fingerprint sensor. In addition, there's this blue button on the left edge of the phone. It's the active key. It does two things. If you do a long press, it'll automatically launch the camera application. And if you just press it once, just once, it's going to launch the activity zone application. And finally, you can remove the back cover. You have to just pry it off like so. It has the same size battery as the Galaxy S5, a 2800 milliamp hour battery. Once that's removed, you could also gain access to its micro SD and micro SIM slots. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about the experience here just because it has pretty much the same arsenal that we found already with the Samsung Galaxy S5. So you have that updated TouchWish UI running on top of Android 4.4.2 KitKat. A one-handed operation mode that allows our thumb to encompass the entire layout. And all the various air gesture features. So basically we're able to wave our hand over the display and from here we can move through content. What's new with the experience though is the activity zone. Basically you press the active key and from here this kind of adheres to mostly very active individuals out there. So you have a barometer, a compass, a flashlight, and a stopwatch. Now they're not really entirely new because you can download apps to get those features and functions. But of course it's just really nice that you have everything in one centralized place. 
Now that's the extent of what's new with the software features of the Galaxy S5 Active over the Galaxy S5. Now people might be might be turned away by the wealth of features it has to offer, but nonetheless, it's still nice to have. The keyboard is more than usable to type messages. Our only complaint is just the small size of each individual button. Having a super sharp display, 4G LTE connectivity, and buttery navigational controls, we really can't complain about the web browsing experience, it's just top notch. There are two music player options here with the Samsung Galaxy S5 Active. You have Sammy's TouchWiz 1 and the Google Play Music app. With the speaker placed in the back of the phone, it produces some very strong, powerful, loud tones, but it kind of lacks any bass to give it a resonating feeling. It's really not all that shocking. This is a multimedia beast, so when it comes to watching high definition videos, it's more than entertaining. You won't be disappointed either with the results from its 16 megapixel camera. It pretty much rivals that of the Galaxy S5. You're gonna get some stunning shots, especially in outdoor situations where sun is plentiful. You're gonna have a crisp, clean look, properly exposed images, and nice punch of colors. A little bit on the saturated side, but there's a good amount of detail in it. What kind of falters though is with low lighting performance. Now, depending on the amount of ambient lighting you get in the scenery, you could still produce some really nice photos like these three here, some sharp looking visuals and details are high and a good contrast with the exposure. However, when lighting is almost non-existent, what you're gonna get are grainier looking photos that have a more of a painting look than an actual photo. Impressively, the phone features 4K video recording on top of 1080p, and we gotta say, it takes some really good looking video, so you're gonna get a lot of strong details in the video, Sm a smooth 30 frames per second capture, so there's no lag to it whatsoever. The exposure might be a little bit on the sensitive side, but we appreciate that it has a very fast, continuous autofocus feature, and the digital zoom proves to be useful as well. Call quality with the Samsung Galaxy S5 Active is good, but not great. So the standouts include things like the strong speakerphone volume and as well as the earpiece. So voices come out more than audible. Just like the Galaxy S5, the Active packs along a 2800 milliamp hour battery. And our battery benchmark test, it manages to achieve seven and a half hours of battery life from a full charge, which is excellent, though not quite as much as the Galaxy S5. It's still good. In our normal everyday usage, it permits us up to two days of usage. If style and design is your kind of thing, you're not gonna find it here with the Galaxy S5 Active. Instead, pick it up for its more ruggedized construction. As you've seen, this handset has all the bells and whistles of the Galaxy S5, and it also has the same exact performance and pretty much the software features. And at $200 a tier contract, you can't go wrong either just because it's a very well-balanced handset. So if you guys want to learn more about the Samsung Galaxy S5 Active, you can check out our website, phonerena.com. John V, thanks for watching.